Hey guys, it's Tacho here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and today we're going to be doing a builds video for the brand new bunny units that we got. So we're going to actually talk about all five of the units, and that's going to include Bartry, who's going to be the prize in Tempest Trials. So let's just jump right in. We're going to start things off with Idun and Fa. So Idun and Fa are the duo unit for the banner. And they're a really powerful duo unit at that. With the duo skill, they grant plus 6 defense and res, and nullify any effective against armor and dragon effects that the foe's weapons may have to all allies within 5 rows and 5 columns of them. So it's a really powerful duo skill, especially on the enemy phase, and it's going to make all your dragon and armor units that much better at baiting the foes. Their weapon is Zephyr Breath, and it grants res up 3, and if they have a hone or rally bonus active on them, or if they're within two spaces of an ally, they can nullify the foe's follow-up attack. They also nullify any penalties active on them. And they also inflict attack minus six on the foe. So essentially, that's a roundabout way of just saying defense and res up six to them. Because if you're lowering the foe's attack, you're just making yourself that much bulkier. And of course, it's a breath weapon, so it has adaptive damage. And as if all of that wasn't already good enough, this weapon is also effective against armor types. So it's one of the most stacked weapons we have in the game right now, and it's gonna make this duo one of the strongest options you can get. Their special attack is Iceberg. They have Sturdy Stance 3 in the A slot, which is real nice. It's gonna inflict guard on the foe, and it's gonna give attack and defense up 6 if the foe initiates combat. Vengeful Fighter right out the box, very nice to see. And go Dragons as well, which is kind of rare, but I mean, Ward Dragons is a bit better for Dragon types, because they are more focused towards the enemy phase, but go Dragons is still pretty nice, so we'll take it. And recommended IVs for this unit is actually going to be a toss-up. They have Super Boons in Defense and Res, so it's really going to be up to preference on which one of those you go with. Me personally, I like plus res on them because they're going to have to fight a lot of magic type units and also a lot of dragon type units. And both of those types are going to hit them in res. And because they have effective against armor on their weapons, most of the melee based armored units are either going to get one shotted or just pose absolutely no threat to them. So that's why I would just give the edge to res over defense for them for the most part. But of course, either is fine, just pick whichever one you like best. And when it comes to a budget build for these two, it's really not that hard, because <laughs> their base kit is already so good. We're just going to give them swap for the assist slot. Assist skills are always going to be up to preference as well, so just pick your favorite. I like to go with swap or pivot on armor type units, so they can just get that extra bit of movement each turn. And I have Mirror Stance 2 in the Sacred Seal slot, which is a pretty fine option. It's going to combo nicely with Sturdy Stance, and they're going to be that much stronger when foes initiate combat on them. But of course, there's other options you can run in the Seal slot. You could also go for Distant Defense. You could also go for Close Defense, since this build is not running Distant Counter. And you're most likely going to be baiting melee-type opponents in that case. You could also go with a Brazen-type skill if you want. Those are going to be real nice on them once they reach the HP requirement. But I do have a preference for Mirror Stance since the added res is going to be real nice against all of the ranged magic type opponents as well as the physical dragon type opponents. So unlike Distant Defense, it does work against both types of melee and ranged opponents. And the added attack is also going to be real nice for them. So next up, we've got the high investment builds. We're going to run Distant Counter on them, obviously, so they can counterattack at any range and be a complete defensive unit. We're running Special Fighter in the B slot, so they can inflict guard on the foes and raise their own special charge by one. Noontime is the preferred special. You could use Aether if you want, but it's a 5 hit and they don't have minus one cooldown count on the weapon. So you can't really combo Quick Repost and Special Fighter on this build with Aether if you gave them that. But Noontime is going to work just fine. Because their weapon is effective against armors, they're going to have no trouble at all dealing massive damage to the foes. And Noontime is going to help them heal up quite a bit. 
so they can stay above the HP limits for Special Fighter and Quick Repost. And we're wrapping this build up with Armor March so they can move extra spaces every turn. And alternatively, you could keep Vengeful Fighter for the enemy phase build, but in that case you would go with Soul over Noontime, because Soul works a bit better with Vengeful Fighter. And we also have access to Distant Defense in the Seal slot this time around, because Vengeful Fighter makes Quick Repost redundant. So between these two builds, I think I have a preference for the Vengeful Fighter build actually. In most cases, I do prefer Special Fighter because inflicting guard on the foes is very helpful. But Vengeful Fighter on this unit, when they have Nullify the foes follow-up attack on the weapon, is just a little too good to pass up. And Distant Defense, adding that extra bit of defense, is going to make this build a little tankier overall in the long run. Again, you could choose to run Mirror Stance on this build instead of Distant Defense. It's just up to preference. But I do like Distant Defense a little better in this case, since having Distant Counter means they're going to be good against bow units as well. And for the player phase build, it's basically going to be the exact same thing, except we are going to run Bold Fighter and Aether this time around. Bold Fighter of course works very nicely with Aether. And because their weapon has effective against armors, once again, we don't really need to do too much more investment for offense for them. They're just going to be destroying everybody. And that allows us to keep Distant Defense as the Sacred Seal. So even though it's a player phase build, it's still not going to slouch that much on the enemy phase. And they're going to be real powerful no matter whose turn it is. Okay, so next up we've got Bunny Fear. This is actually my favorite unit on the banner, believe it or not. She is just way too freaking adorable. And I like her weapon, I think she has probably the best axe weapon in the game outside of Irvon. So Bun Bun Baton, it has null follow-up, it has minus one special cooldown, and it has effective against armors all built into one. So this is an insanely powerful player phase weapon, one of the best in the game. So real nice stuff there. She has harsh command plus in the assist slot. Also, arguably the best assist skill in the game, outside of the personal ones like Future Vision and To Change Fate. Then she has Attack and Speed Solo in the A slot, which is real good for a player phase unit. And Air Orders 3, allowing your units to jump around and make things that much more unpredictable for the foes. So her base kit is real good, and recommended IVs for her, I'm gonna have to say plus speed. At no point in time was that ever going to be up for debate. When units have null follow-up, you definitely want to go for as much speed as possible so they can force the double attacks and ignore any wary fighter type effects that the foes may have equipped. So plus speed, definitely the best choice for her. And for the budget build, we really don't have to do too much for her. I'm recommending Gale Force as the special attack and we're going to run Heavy Blade in the seal slot as well. So she's going to have no trouble at all ramping into Gale Force with the minus one cooldown, the null follow-up effect, and Desperation as well, we've got that in the B slot. So she can just hit twice in a row, get Gale Force off, and then either move in or move back. Thanks to her being a flying type unit, that's going to be no trouble at all. She crosses any obstacle and there's really nothing that hinders flying types when it comes to mobility. So real good stuff there. And for the heavy investment build, there's really not that much different. It's pretty much the same build except with higher budget skills. Instead, we've got Guidance as the passive C slot. I love Guidance on any flying unit. It's just so helpful to have and being able to assist your armored units and have them move essentially three spaces a turn is just way too good. And Attack and Speed Push 4 is going to be the recommended A slot, of course. It causes chip damage on her, and it also raises her attack and speed. So those are the two stats that we want, and lowering HP is going to be nice for desperation. So we can just go ahead and hit the foes twice in a row. There are of course other options. If you don't want to run Gale Force, then feel free to run a special attack on her, like say Luna for example. And with Heavy Blade and Desperation, you can hit twice in a row, and the second hit is going to get Luna off. So you're going to kill pretty much any foes that you initiate on if you want to run it like that. And if you're not too confident in her attack stat and you don't think Heavy Blade is going to be the best option, 
You can always go with either Swift Sparrow or the brand new shiny Death Blow 3 Sacred Seal that we will be getting from this Tempest Trial. And then in that case, you would run Moonbow as the special attack since it's a two hit and it's going to be the easiest to activate with Desperation without any special charge on the build. So real good stuff. And like I said already, Fear is my favorite character on the banner. So our next unit of the day is going to be Est. Her weapon is the Eagle's Egg, and it's pretty much the exact same weapon that Brunya has. It negates any penalties active on her, and it grants all stats plus 5, assuming that she's within two spaces of an ally. So a real easy requirement, especially with flying type movement. And getting all stats plus 5 is really insane on a unit like this, especially when she comes with Fury 4 right out the gates. Special attack is going to be Moonbow, and she has a brand new dual chill skill as her B-slot passive, which is real cool. And in the C-slot, she comes with Hone Flyers. Even though this became sort of a budget skill nowadays, it is still nice to come with Hone Flyers already, so it is convenient. And for IVs on Est, I have to say go with plus attack. She does have a super boon in attack and res, but I, I feel like the attack is definitely going to help her out way more. Her attack stat is just outrageously high for a mage unit. And considering the fact that her weapon gives her plus 5 attack as well, and it's going to nullify any penalties active on her, there's just no way to weaken her and she's just going to have a sky high attack stat all the time. So for the budget build, we're going to run Reposition on her. It's real easy to use Reposition on flying type units, so we're going with that. We are going to change the B-slot to Desperation, even though of course that dual chill skill was really cool. I do feel like Desperation is going to give her a more powerful player phase. And it combos very nicely with Fury 4 as well, so that's just one more point for Desperation. And we're going to wrap the build up with the Death Blow Sacred Seal that we just got. Really powerful, and this is going to make this Est a monster on the player phase. You could optionally go for Swift Sparrow as well in the seal slot, if you prefer that. Or even Brazen Attack and Speed too, since Fury 4 is going to make it real easy to lower your HP and go for the double attacks with Desperation. And for the high investment build, we're actually going to go with Heavy Blade 4 on this unit. It's going to add a flat 5 damage to all her attacks if she has a higher attack stat than the foe which is going to be really easy for her to do thanks to her weapon's effect. And it's also going to provide a special charge plus one. So combined with Desperation, that means every second attack she does is going to be Moonbow. And we may not have any chip damage skills on this build to help us get into Desperation range, but because her weapon grants plus five to all stats, it shouldn't be too hard for her to tank at least one hit and get low on HP. So it's a pretty powerful build. And for the Sacred Seal slot, I have Swift Sparrow too, so you can just get that off right on the first turn. But if you rather go for Brazen Attack and Speed, that is of course an option, and it combos very nicely with Desperation. Also, like we said before, the Death Blow Sacred Seal is going to be nice on her too. So just pick your favorite when it comes to the Sacred Seal. Okay, so our next unit is going to be Narshin. I kind of didn't want to talk about Narshin, to be honest, because I, I feel like... Most people are either going to just summon this guy for fodder or not even bother going for the merges on him. Because he's basically just another Grand Hero Battle style unit with the flying lance combo and... I mean, we've just seen way too many units like this already. But regardless of all that, he isn't necessarily a terrible unit. His weapon is the Guilt Fork Plus and it's going to be inheritable on anyone that's a lance type. It grants attack and defense up 5, and it nullifies any penalties to attack and defense during combat if you are within two spaces of an ally. So it's a really nice inheritable weapon, and it doesn't have a tough requirement to meet. He has vengeance as his special attack, just like he did when he was a grand hero battle unit. Chill speed in the B slot, which is nice for fodder, especially since he's a 4 star summon. And the dreaded lance experience 3. To this day, I have no idea why they still keep putting these experience skills on units. It just makes it that much harder for you to grind SP when you're leveling up at a faster rate. So I really don't know what they were thinking with these experience skills, but whatever. 
So when it comes to IVs on this guy, he does have a defense super boon. So I recommend plus defense to try and optimize that a bit. But in all honesty, attack and speed boons would be pretty nice as well. His speed is at 34, which could be nice with the plus speed, and it will give him that one-up edge over units like Heath and Cormag and Travent that he is very similar to. And of course, plus attack is just always going to be good on any unit anyway. And res too, if you're trying to make him an enemy phase unit and you want to stack his res as high as possible. So you do have some options with this guy, but I, I do feel like plus defense overall will be the most useful option. And for the budget build on this guy, we're going to take the defense refine on the weapon. Like I said, defense is really the thing you want to stack the most on him. So he can just have that much of an easier time when he's fighting melee opponents. Reposition as the assist. He is a flying unit and reposition is always good on them. Bonfire for the special instead of vengeance. So we can just stack his defense high and gain as much damage as possible with that. And for the A slot, we've got brazen attack and defense. I mean, there's really not too many good options for him in the A slot that are budget. But Brazen Attack and Defense is going to give him the two stats that he's looking for the most. And it is pretty easy to obtain from a 4-star Ares. Also, we've got Quick Repost in the B slot. I feel like this is his best B slot regardless of what build he's running. And in the C slot, we have Ward Flyers, but feel free to go with any of your favorite flying buff skill like... Fortify Flyers or Gold Flyers, just pick your favorite, but I do like Ward Flyers on him because in a Ward Flyer cube, this guy is going to be pretty nice as a bait unit for melee types. And in the seal slot, we've got IO Shield to protect him against bow units, and that way his high defense is going to keep him alive if he takes a hit from a bow. So as far as the high investment builds go for this guy, I mean, there's two options really. The first one is going to be Distant Counter, but he does have a couple of issues when you run the Distant Counter build. So with Berkit's Lance and the Res Refine, we can effectively give him plus 11 Res, which is very welcome on this guy, thanks to his completely trash Res stat. And of course we've got Distant Counter, so he can attack from any distance and counterattack all foes. But the problem with this guy as a enemy phase unit is that he doesn't really have any protection against bows unless you run IO shield and having to run distant counter in the A slot as well is really hurtful on this unit because you're not able to double up on the sacred seal slot and take an A slot passive that may have given him some more defenses like distant defense or close defense or even brazen attack and res or something like that. So having to run Distant Counter and IO Shield on the same unit when their res is so abysmally low for starters is really going to hinder his overall ability to tank. But the saving grace is that you can run him on a Flyer Ball with Ward Flyers and patch up his res and allow him to tank a lot better on the enemy phase. So if you're going to go with this build, just keep an eye on this guy and try not to go too crazy with him. Definitely keep him a mile away from dragon type units and also units like Ophelia that can target his low res stat and really abuse him for having that. And the other high investment option for this guy is actually a bit better I would say and if you're going to invest in him I would recommend doing something like this. So we have the slaying spear plus with the null armor effect. Of course that's going to be very good. Having effective against armors is the best weapon type effectiveness you can have. And nullifying any stat buffs that they may have as well is going to be real nice. We've got Sturdy Stance 3 in the A slot, which is a pretty good one on him. Of course, that's going to come at the cost of a Spring Idun, but it is worth it if you really like Narshin and you really want to build him, then I hate to say it, but this is his best A slot option. It's going to inflict guard on the foes, which is really nice for him. And it's going to buff his attack and defense as well. So it's a really good skill for him when we're only going to focus on fighting melee type opponents. Once again, quick repost and ward flyers. I'm pretty sure those are his best options overall. And we're going to wrap this build up with close defense in the seal slot. It's just going to be really good on a build like this where we know for a fact we're only going to be fighting melee type opponents. So that's pretty much it for Narshin. And the final unit we have to talk about is Bartree. 
So he's gonna be the Tempest Trial Prize, and his weapon is the Carrot Cudgel. It's pretty much the exact same weapon that Narshin has, so we're not gonna cover it too much, but it is a sword type instead of a lance. He comes with Smite, Obstruct, and Odd Attack Wave as his passive skills. So, outside of his weapon, it's a pretty terrible base kit. His base kit doesn't really offer you that much, and we don't really have any Ivies to speak of with this guy because he is a Tempest Trial Prize. So for the budget build, we're gonna go for the Defense Refine on the Carrot Cudgel. In most cases, I would say go for the Res Refine, but since it's a budget build and we're not gonna have Distant Counter on him, you will want to prioritize his defense so he's that much better when he's fighting melee type opponents. We've got Reposition as the Assist. There's honestly nothing wrong with Smite if you want to keep that, but Reposition holds up a little better in all the other modes outside of Aether Raids. We've got Bonfire as his special attack so he can pile up the damage with his high defense really well. Fury 3 in the A slot just like the OG Bartree has. It's really nice on him because he doesn't really have any weaknesses in terms of stats. His speed is a bit low but everything else is well above average so Fury 3 is going to be real nice. Quick repost in the B slot so he can get double attacks when the foes initiate. And Brazen Attack and Defense as the Sacred Seal so we can combo with Fury and gain some extra stats once we get low on HP. But of course he's got a lot of other options you can run as well in the seal slot. It's going to be up to preference. Close defense is going to be nice and it's always going to be active. Whereas brazen attack and defense needs you to be low on HP first. And you could also go for one of the wave or chill skills in the seal slot so you can support your allies and help them out a little more. Now for the high investment builds, we've got a bait build just like we had on Narshin. We're going to be running the barrier blade to give him some additional res. With the res refine of course. And when we combine that with the mirror stance sacred seal, this guy is going to be getting plus 11 res when the foes initiate on him. Putting him at a very solid 40 res unmerged, that's pretty nuts for an infantry unit. And it's going to make him very good on the enemy phase. We've got Aether for healing, and we've got Quick Repost for doubling. And his HP is really good, so Infantry Pulse can be nice on him for supporting your allies and getting their specials ready. But if you don't want to run Infantry Pulse, you could always go for a Wave skill. And for the player phase build, we're going to be pulling off some Wrath shenanigans this time around. We've got the Slaying Edge Plus with the Defense Refine. That's going to bring Bonfire down to a two-hit cooldown. Sturdy Impact in the A slot is going to raise our defense and nullify the foe's follow-ups. So he can initiate combat, raise his defense by 10, and really reduce the damage that the foes can do to him. And once this guy gets below 75% HP, Wrath and Brazen Attack and Defense are going to start kicking in. And every turn after that, with Time's Pulse in the C slot, he's going to have Bonfire ready to roll. He's basically going to be able to one-shot anything that he attacks with this build. And if you've got Dancer support on the team, he'll be able to attack multiple times or get out of danger after he attacks once and needs to get out of the way. So a really cool build and it allows Bartree to show off those muscles a bit. So that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the builds. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, this is your boy Tacho signing out. So I'll catch you guys again in the next one.